So you like, I, I put a block here. Yeah, you're a little so taller. I look a little, oh, sorry. Hey, welcome to this week's show on The Archer's Choice. You know, folks, we headed straight north to high-level Alberta with Bobby Irvin of Wolf Creek <laughs> Outfitters. You know, we've been bearing down there for a bunch of years, and this is no different. Matter of fact, we've got so much action from up there this past spring. Two solid weeks of bearing down with Wolf Creek Outfitters. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. You know, one of the things that we've always tried to tell everyone, and that is you need to be adaptable on every hunt. You know, sometimes it just ain't like what the books always say. That's for sure. And one of the neat things up there with Bob and Wolf Creek is they're always out there putting new test baits out because situations happen where, you know, maybe the bears moved off or dandelions pop up. You know, and that's something else to bring up is, folks, when those dandelions start to spring up in the spring, that's like candy to those bears. So these guys had it all set up that we had baits around where the sun was hitting these dandelions and we're going to bring them up and, well, it definitely panned out. Once again, we traveled up to northern Alberta to bear down on those Alberta boons. And as usual, we were back with the bear man himself, Bob Irving of Wolf Creek Outfitters. If you haven't noticed it by now, we hunt with Bob every spring. We often wonder, is it his charming personality? Nope. Is it his good looks? <laughs> I don't think so. Could it be for all those crazy guides he has every spring? Hmm. Maybe it's just because he runs a great camp. He truly makes it fun to be up there, and most of all, he is one outfitter that does what he tells you he's going to do. Oh, and by the way, he has big bears, lots of bears, and the hunting just keeps getting better. He and his team are always trying to figure out where to put new sites, what new land to explore, and he constantly is concerned about not overhunting any of his massive area. And besides his very successful bear camps, Bob's other hunts include moose, muleys, and giant Alberta whitetails. Heck, you never know. He just might have Vicky and I hunting those Alberta bruiser bucks someday. Okay, Ralph, we're going to go into our bait site here, and you can see where the cod's been going in and taking out harvested bears already. Bait's in there about 100 yards. So today I'm going to take in uh, a chunk of beaver. I got some pork trim in this bucket. And that there is a sack of reject cookies. You feel free to have as many as you want, and if you can carry that in for me, we'll get set up on this bait, and we'll look for some traction so there. Bob, you've talked about, um, you know, there's been bears taken off this bait. Mm -hmm. This spring already? This spring. Um, do you see that deterring in anything, like this from week you know, next week to next week? Actually, I like it because um, when you get a bait like this and you've got a multitude of bears in here, you get three or four of those smaller bears, juveniles or bears that hunters have passed on, and those bears will actually broadcast the word. As the bears rooting around in the grease and the beaver scent and the cookies too, uh, they'll be going through the woods, laying out trails, other bears will hit their trails and follow it into the bait. So if I got a bait where we've got four or five bears coming, a hunter selects a big one, we haul it out, next day them four other bears are still in there, and they're just broadcasting to the rest of them, it actually brings in more bears. So even though we've harvested bears out of here, we still got four or five smaller ones doing our advertising for us, and other bears will come in. Now this is going into the first week in June, the bears will start rutting. If we get some sows on these baits, it's unlimited how many big bears can come in. Uh, the baits you were on the other day, you saw a sow in there, and there was three or four shooter bears that yep. come, yep. and uh, the one jumbo. And that jumbo bear is gonna show up yet, we'll maybe get them this week, where we have a bait in his neighborhood with a sow on it. It's gonna be, it's going to be great. If you've got a good bait in big good bear country, you can arguably shoot a bear a night off of it and still not hurt it. 
So even though we've taken good bears off of this bait, we've still got smaller bears in there and possibly sows. They're going to be bringing more bears in. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Now, Ralph, are you ready to go after that dandelion bear? I'm always ready. Let's get after it. He's down right there. Oh, oh man, that bear come in. He was coming out to the dandelion, so they put the test bait. He's been hitting it for about four to four days. The bear came in. He presented me a slightly quarter away shot. I punched him and he's down right there. You could see my orange fletching. Yo Vic, <laughs> we are bearing down once again. Well, clear as day. Here's the downline patch. That bear, this is why they knew that this was all active. Look at the piles of scat here, there. You can see a trail coming in and out, going where the dandelions. That's why they put this test bait right there. The bear was right there. I took him. He actually come running out here right through here, hit this opening, was running, spun around, and he's down right there. Oh. Ralph, congratulations. Yeah, babe, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, that was good. I mean, it was a short hunt, but I mean, that bear came in, boom, and he went in go far we at all. We set up the summit stand. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't 20 minutes, and no. we had that bear. We saw, spotted him from the left, and he come right in. And I mean, I don't know if he was really, we knew he was hitting the bait because the bait was hit, obviously. Mm -hmm. But to see all that scat up in, you know, up in those dandelions in those open fields, I mean, it was just like, that's really... You know, that's knowing your animals. When, when, when Bob and the guides, they knew where to go when things started to slow down, and those dandelions were definitely the ticket. Definitely. Now we're going to join Patty Finney, a Spring Valley sportsman. Not Mark Finney, but his wife Patty. They say maybe the, the better hunter. I think so. I doubt it. But this is her first bear hunt, and her first bear she takes with her bow. So let me get this straight. There's two girls and one guy? On this show. Yeah? Yeah. That's not fair.
We'll be right back with more of The Archer's Choice, eh? Welcome back to The Archer's Choice. Now let's continue on with Patty's first bear hunt. You go, girl. I drew back a couple times, but he didn't give me a shot. He went to the barrel, stuck his head in, stuck his fist in trying to get it, and he turned and gave me the shot. And I, I got him. Mm. I, we, we got him. Good shot, he took off. And I mean, I don't even know how far he is. We, we heard the moan. And uh, now yeah, now we're gonna go get Brian and tell him he did it for us. You go, girl, man. I'm telling you, Patty, yep, that is awesome. I'm so happy to have someone else in the tree stands hunting out in the woods, another girl. I need to start inviting more of the guys. Come on, guys. We can't <laughs> let these girls keep out doing us. This is oh, crazy. Patty, you did excellent. Let me tell you. Was. She was that, so that's excited. That's what it's all about, the excitement, the adrenaline. And I mean, just sitting there watching that hunt, you just know. You just, you, you're just captivated and caught into it. That's what this is all about. She, she was pretty darn excited. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, well, congrats again. And now it's my turn. So if you guys want, like I told you before, is, you know, go have some popcorn, go get a soda, do something. Cause now, come on. Now, this is an exciting hunt. We set up up in the wild, wild west. Which was awesome. Which was awesome. And we, we ran into a situation where the bear was a little bit smarter than, than the average bear. And we ended up having to set up our summit stands on the opposite side of the bait site where the permanent stand was at because that bear knew every time we were up in that Sure, permanent. he figured it out. And the thing is, is like we've always said, you got to be adaptable and well. Having trees, you know, having our summits there and being able to do the, you know, the little mobility is, is what got Vicky this bear. Welcome back. The suspense is killing me. Let's see what she does next. Now, as I like to say, this was a tricky bear. The first night, he would not present us a shot. Ralph and I were both in the permanent stand, and he was so wise to us being up there that he, he would never, ever present us a shot. That next afternoon, we didn't bait him. We waited until we were ready to go hunting. We went in, we brought in our summit stands and our buck steps. We set up my tree stand on the side of the bait site where he was always hanging out and not presenting me a shot. That evening, 
were in our stands, Ralph was still in the permanent stand, that bear knew that there was still someone up there, and he was very curious and wise to that person up in that tree stand. He's a very wise old bear. Fortunately for me, he didn't realize that where we, where we positioned that tree stand for me to sit in my summit, he had no clue I was up there and he finally presented me a shot. That took a lot of work and I'm very happy to have harvested this bear. Look at the size of his paw. Can you, can you see this? Look at this pad. <laughs> Did you see that? Now that is a beautiful bird. Oh. Squared like seven foot. Wow, aren't we happy guys? We are happy. That was awesome. I mean, we had a great spring and now... You really did have a good spring. I mean, it's just been... It's been awesome. I'm glad that I was able to select the sites for you to set up in and put yeah. the stands up, put okay, our no, stands up. I would just like I mean, to thank Bobby because he knows where to put me. Well, I mean, this just ain't fair. I mean, <laughs> two girls against a guy. I mean, guys, give me a call. I need some help here. Let's let's all start hunting against these girls because now but wait, we have next week's show That's because right. this was part one part of part two. two. So you don't know who actually outdoes who. That's right. We still have a chance. I'm hanging on by what hair I have left. So folks, listen, we want to thank you. We hope you enjoyed part one of Baron Down up in Alberta. And stay tuned because next week is part two, right here on The Archer's Choice.